Welcome back to Novice Explorer Radio. It's been two months since the Novice Explorers left Camp Lockdown, and for once, there is no beach in sight. In this week's video, we head to the lesser explored inland regions of Sardinia, seeking cooler climates as we venture up into the mountains. We have been wowed with our adventure this week, and can't wait to show you another side of this stunning island. Not that we need to give you any more excuses to come and see it for yourself. We begin our inland exploration on the ancient volcanic plateau of Jara di Gesturi, high above the fields and flatlands of central Sardinia. This impressive plateau covers 4,400 hectares, so we booted up and went for a wander through the cork and myrtle forests. But we weren't just horsing around, we were in search of the last wild horses of Europe, the famous ponies of the Jara. They were thought to have been introduced in the Iron Age. Now 500 of them roam wild in this unique habitat. The route was dotted with shepherd's huts called pinetas, shelters that keep the shepherds warm in the winter and provide much needed shade in the summer. What a spot to enjoy dinner, but we thought those clouds looked a bit ominous. We woke the next morning to bright blue sky and made our way north to our next camp spot. Good morning, now you find us next to a Lago di Gusana. So since we've moved into the hills, we found the climate to be a lot more pleasant. So pleasant in fact that we actually used the duvet the last couple of nights and I've almost been considering putting my fleece on. Hey. It's been a while, but today it's lovely. There's a tiny bit of a breeze, but the sun's just nice. It's not like frazzling me up. <laughs> And we also managed to snag this pretty cool little park up right underneath this tree, which has helped with the heat as well. Yeah, managed to sleep in until 10 a.m. this morning, which is unheard of in this heat normally. We actually arrived yesterday, which was a Sunday, so we thought, oh, this is going to be absolutely heaving. But to our surprise, there was only like a handful of people about, wasn't mm, there? Lovely. So it's been really quiet, really nice today. Woke up, had a coffee, sat on the... Uh, on the side of the lake, just watching the fish. There's a lot of fish around here. Mm. Um, kayakers. Kayakers. Wish we had a paddleboard because it's lovely and calm and flat. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's been really nice. Yeah. So let's enjoy maybe a few more minutes down by the river. By the river, it's a lake, Meg. But we've got plenty more to see in the inland region of Sardinia, which I'm quite excited to, to see and to show you because you've got no idea again. No idea. Let's rock and roll. So 
So we've just left the lakeside park up, well worth persevering for. We couldn't find it initially because we had to pull off the road early and go underneath. Uh, the main road is a bit tricky. The road was also a little bit tricky, um, but well worth it for one night. Um, beautiful, quiet spot, and it's sort of recharge your batteries. I love camping next to water, so uh, calm, isn't it? Next up on our tour is the highest town in Sardinia, Foni, which is nestled in at 1,000 metres above sea level. In summer season, it's not normally on many tourists' radar. We ventured up higher along the winding mountain roads into the rolling landscape to check out Sardinia's ski slopes. So we've made our way up the mountain with fantastic views. It's really, really beautiful. Somewhat reminds me of the Shropshire Hills. And there you can see the ski lifts behind us. But we can't go any further because we're not even supposed to really be stood here because it's um, under construction, I think, and it's not safe. So we've stuck around the cordon just to get a bit of a picture, but we'll go back over there and behave ourselves. I'll show you what it looks like in peak season. Wow peak snowy season. It's hard to imagine what this place would be like in deep snow. In the winter, daily temperatures rarely rise above 7 degrees Celsius. But now in the summer, it's been a much needed respite from last week's temperatures in the low 30s. So on our way back down the hill, we've spotted a freshwater spring, which is one thing we love about the mountains. Most of the time they're on part for night and they come well reviewed, but we also keep an eye out for when the locals are using it and filling up like multiple, multiple bottles or glass jars full of it. And uh, it's really cold and tastes a lot better than stuff that you get out of the tap in the towns. Touch wood, we've never had an issue, but uh, <laughs> we wait for the day that we have to get the uh, tablets out the first aid box. What would, what? Was it not dull collapse? Imodium. Imodium. <laughs> Touch wood. Beautiful little spot as well. So the first spot we had in mind didn't quite work out, but instead we headed slightly more south, um, up into the mountains, and we're currently over 1,500 metres above sea level. Views are beautiful, and we've got options of around three spots that are all on part for night, and um, we've just got to decide which one's for us. I'm hoping we can stay here. Um, it's very quiet in terms of traffic. Um, there's a few farmers about with the goats and a few little dogs <laughs> driving the goats up the hill. Um, but the view's absolutely stunning. Just one night here, hopefully we can do it. Um, it's been incredible, hasn't it? Mm, beautiful views. You can hear the, the sound of the bells on the goats' necks up the hill. And it's just like twinkling away. We let, met little Musqueet's owner, very friendly shepherd. Yeah, we had a really tough conversation. Um, trying to use Google Translate but we've got very limited signal here so that wasn't working then we got the old Collins uh, <laughs> book out and it just wasn't really translating very well but we did have a bit of a conversation which is quite nice see if she wants another mm, too cute you're gonna get me in trouble no oh, my squeeze <laughs> <laughs> That's exactly what I mean, you caught it. Oh. 
just want to be loved. <laughs> She's left you. So now that we're comfortable and we've made camp, it's time to think about tea time. But interesting fact before I get cooking is Cal is back in his fleece for the first time in what? How many months? Two? Two or three, he's got to be three. Uh, Fits like a glove. Oh, I've missed this. <laughs> Just cocoon now. He's also hurt his back. Yes. I forget how old I've gotten. Um, me and Meg were doing some cool shots, weren't we, earlier? Oh yeah, cool kids. Uh, here are the shots. Were they worth hurt my back for? Yeah. I don't think so. <laughs> He's just popped at least two painkillers. I'm such an artist, I suffer for the art, Meg. I really hope the pictures are worth it. <laughs> I've got a sneaky feeling they might not be. So, back to Flora on food, and for tea tonight we're going to be making Pane Fratao, which is made from the really thin bread known as music paper bread and it is a recipe from the neuro region where we are right now it's got very humble uh, beginnings this dish and it literally translates pane, pane fratao to what does it translate to <coughs> broken bread there we go it's kind of like poppadoms a little bit thin thin poppadoms yeah so this recipe i would have never of even attempted or like created or like thought about it's so different but we're going to give it a go it's shepherd's food so when this bread is left to waste it's either gone a little bit squidgy and soft or it's been uneaten at dinner time or lunch time or whatever it's saved and so we're going to immerse these pieces of bread in stock traditionally it's lamb stock but uh, I haven't got a lamb stock so we're doing it veggie and then so it's immersed gets a bit wet and stodgy and then laid on a plate and then there's like tomato ragu, ragu laid on top which I'm going to make a vegetable ragu pecorino cheese and then keep layering it up like a bit like a lasagna really and then a poached egg on top so yeah oh I no idea. Broken bread. <laughs> Broken bread. So that's what I'm going to be making um, in my own fashion. This isn't necessarily traditional um, way of doing it, but I'm going to give it a damn good go. So we're going to start off with the vegetable ragu. Normally tomato and basil sauce that's blended, but I've got some veg that is past its best. So I'm going to chuck all of that in and make like a chunky vegetable ragu. So some courgette, pepper, garlic, an onion. I've got some tomatoes, which have really seen better days. <laughs> it was a bit dented. Um, some passata and then some spices, herbs. I've got some dried oregano. Um, might put a little bit of chili in it as well. So I'm gonna start that. As I've mentioned in previous vlogs, in the heat of the Sardinian summer, we rarely eat hot food in the evening, as it's a struggle to cool the van down enough to sleep. But with it being so cool outside, it was great to finally cook an evening meal. An interesting fact, our gas bottle has lasted for over six weeks, which is a brand new record. The pieces of bread only need soaking in the stock for a minute. Don't let them sink to the bottom of the pan. Then it's time to layer up with sauce and Sardinian pecorino cheese. And there we have it, pan fratau. A very regional speciality that also used up all of our leftover bits and pieces, which is very good really, very um, economical and zero waste. It smells good. But now it's for the testing. I think it's gonna be like a bit like a lasagna, but with a little bit of wet bread. It's gonna be a bit different, I think. That's really nice. To You're be right, honest, huh? yeah, I think the thing I was concerned about was the texture of what the bread was going to become. Yeah, you know, it's been um, 
bathing in the uh, stock, but actually it's really nice. It's not like, it's not really stodgy. It still holds its sort of like shape and just doesn't turn into mush. Mm. Nice little bit of kick in there as well. So what is the expert's opinion on that dish? Well, that was a success. I hadn't got too high hopes for it, but that was really, really lovely and well worth the effort. Mm -hmm. The bread turned into like a kind of pastorine noodle, a bit more noodle texture, and the sauce was like a little bit of a spicy ratatouille. Mm -hmm. The only thing I would say is I'd like more cheese and <laughs> my egg didn't. Um, oh. pop because it already popped in the water so you know I always give the best things to Cal to give him the you best are experience. The best thing. Behave. <laughs> um, but yeah really I'm gonna write the recipe for that on uh, uh, Camp Comfort's recipe part. We spent a very quiet night up in the hills undisturbed and snuggled up in our home on wheels. Good morning. We've just had our possibly first ever morning shower and it was rather refreshing. We've woken up to the sound of goat bells and... Not much else, yeah. yeah. Meg's dressed up like a smurf. I've washed the dreads, everyone. <laughs> Anyone that's got dreads will know how much of a, of a big job it is. And I love the, uh, the cap. It really hides them quite well, doesn't it? <laughs> Said I look like an old miner. Anyway, so we had a cracking night's sleep, uh, really good food. I only heard, I think, one vehicle this morning. So quiet up here. Um, we managed to sleep under the duvet, which was nice because yeah. uh, it just a bit more comfortable. Yeah, it's really weird. Like, I've really missed sleeping under a duvet for the last couple of months. I know it sounds like we're whinging, but... Something about yeah. it. Yeah. But uh, yeah, that's it. So we've had a nice shower. We've got the van semi-clean and we've got a few more chores to do. One of which is going to be to pump up all the tyres just to get them up to pressure, make sure that's all good. And yeah, that's it really. Yep. This has been declared as one of Cal's favourite spots. Yeah, it's been epic as I'm sure the footage from yesterday showed. It's just constantly outside with your camera, weren't you? <laughs> right, chores again. We highly recommend purchasing a better quality pump than this one. But this was an emergency purchase in Germany when we realised not all of the um, nozzly adapter things fit our vehicle. At the garages. Just don't judge us, this is <laughs> crap. Buy a better one. And um, I'm going to let Meg take the reins because I woke up with an incredibly stiff back. Um, popped a few pills and I'm feeling a bit better, thanks for asking. But um, yes, Meg is going to be the uh, chief pumper-upper on this one. Things we do. We left in search of our next cultural experience. Unfortunately, the place where you can get an audio tour is closed today and um, which it would cost about 10 euros for two lots of like listening devices and a tour and a map around the place. But as I said, it's closed so we're going to do our own little hunt out for some of the most beautiful murals and maybe a little bit of a mega history lesson too. Actually, they're not about beauty. These murals are a means of protest against oppression and injustice. The murals began in the late 60s and expressed the social discontent of the local people and island after the economic collapse, strikes and the oil crisis. And no town excursion would be complete without a gelato break. You've got your fruity one and I've got my regular nuts and tiramisu. The murals tell the story of local people and the area's social, historical and political issues such as the struggle for liberation, education and unemployment, capturing local shepherds and miners to international topics such as 9-11, war and poverty. 
There are around 150 murals dotted around the town. On every street, you'll find one. So quite a stark contrast to this morning with the lovely cool 24 degrees up in the mountains. We've descended quite far and we're probably hitting the low, low to mid 30s almost. Yeah. And you can really feel the difference. Yeah, I miss those mountains already. So we know you guys didn't subscribe for the Sardinian weather forecast, but we think it's quite important to mention because it is uh, something we haven't really been used to dealing with the heat. We've had more cold, I would say, and it's not dictating the travel, but it's just something that we have to think about now. Great. Oh, that's a sight. <laughs> so what did you think to that then? Um, when we first drove through the town, admittedly I wasn't that taken by it. We saw a few murals, um, I think mainly because the streets are very narrow, it's a one-way system and it was just getting a bit awkward. I was like, ah, I don't know if I'm going to enjoy this too much. Yeah, the park it was a nightmare as well, yeah. but the experience itself and the murals yeah. was really interesting. Okay, that being said, I'm glad that we did do it. It's a shame, I think, that we didn't have the opportunity for the audio tour. Unfortunately, there was a guided tour going on, so the booth was closed, unfortunately, so we timed that wrong. But um, no, I did enjoy it. The town was um, nicer than I anticipated, I think. Mm. Actually, walking around was very nice, very... Uh, there's a lot of tourists there, mm. more than I expected. Busier than we expected, yeah. yeah. I think anyone that's got an interest in arts, yeah. politics, it doesn't just have to be Italian or Sardinian politics, yeah. art and culture, highly recommend the tour because I think it will give more of an in-depth look into things and actually explain it, where we were yeah. kind of going around guessing. Yeah, I must um, admit, some of the murals that weren't too obvious uh, or politics that I'm even aware of. I'm not a big politics person, so mm. some of them did go over my head, so it would have been nice to have a bit of context for some of them, but I can still appreciate the artwork. You know, there's varying styles and designs and um, something around each corner. Yeah, so highly recommended if you come to this region of Sardinia yep. and not something that you'd necessarily expect. No, well worth a visit if you're um, in the area. Yeah, so saying that, Let's get out of the area and find our next car park. It is getting rather warm. <laughs> Shh, don't talk about the weather because that's all we're talking about in these videos now. Uh, we're going to head to the sticks and just see what we can find there. And this lovely place is where we're going to finish today's video. Sorgente su Golagone. Quite a nice little surprise. We came here just uh, on a bit of a whim, yeah. and we found there's a little walk nearby. It's two euros each to enter, which we're a bit hesitant by because we didn't actually know what we we're coming into. However, it's really, really worth the two euros. Yes, there's a massive, what is it, just gorgy, sinkhole <laughs> plunge pool. Yeah, you're not allowed in it because yeah. we would have definitely been in there. It is absolutely gorgeous. The water is so crystal clear that. The camera and my phone, try, trying to take pictures, it wouldn't pick it up properly. Yeah, we, we tried our best, but um, even I was tempted just to like pencil dive in. <laughs> but apparently you can go down 135 yeah. metres. I have even sat on a porcelain toilet for the first time in weeks. <laughs> it was worth the two pounds just for the toilet. And we've actually found quite a lot of shade on the walk along the river. Uh, we've just cooled down a bit now. So yeah, I think we're going to end this one here. It's been an action packed few days. So glad that we record it because I had to ask Meg what have we actually done in this video and I forgot we've been on the plateau with the horses, the, the lakeside, sunsets, the lakeside, then on top of the mountains with the sunsets Ski and the resorts. Ah, action packed. It's been incredible. Yeah. So if you want to continue the journey, as always, please feel free to subscribe if not already and press the bell button to receive notifications each time we upload a video. And if you're interested, there's a little join button underneath if you'd like to become a part of the Flora and the Novice Explorers members. Membership program is yeah. what it's supposed to be called. And leave us a comment down below telling us if your favorite bits, if you like, a thumbs up always really helps out the channel. Yeah. And we will see you in the next one. Arrivederci.